Hello class, this is Miss Hooper coming to you not from the kitchen today but back in the spare classroom. We finally managed to, well I say we, it was George, finally he finally sorted out the room um, which was very nice of him. So I'm back in here, back in a space where it's not so crowded with kitcheny things. So yes, back ready for today for another video. I apologise, I am looking a little bit dishevelled. I've just got in from a run. Um, for all you mums and dads out there, I've just downloaded that, that Couch to 5k app. Oh, goodness me. Anyway, keep it up because I need to slim down. Anyway. Moving on for the children. Okay, so today is Tuesday the 5th of May 2020. It is the 12th day of this half term of home learning. Yesterday was Star Wars Day. I hope the force was with all of you. Um, so I'm going to jump straight in with your activities for, um, for today. So first of all, phonics. So we'll talk about reception first and there is a dotty cap. Uh, reception, you are looking at another trigraph today. So that is three letters, one sound. And the sound altogether that these make, which is actually a word as well, is the sound giving you a little clue. Ear, well done, ear. So, ear is made up of the just like you're cracking eggs, ah, 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 ants on your arm, and Arr! fantastic. So those three letters together make that one sound, ear. You've got two tasks to do for your phonics today. Number one, you are going to read and put the phonics buttons on a list of words that have all got the ear sound in them. So let's have a little look at these ones first. So let's look at this word here first. What's that first sound? Good, well done. It's the short version. It's not f, it's that short f. Short f followed by our trigraph, ear. Put them together, f, ear, f, ear, fear. Well done. If you have a fear, it means you're frightened of something. Okay, let's have a look at this word. See, can you see I've put the phonics buttons on that? I've put a dot under f because it's one letter, one sound. And I've put a line under my trigraph ear because it's three letters, one sound. So let's have a look at this word together. What does it start with? B, b, b. Well done. B, b, b for bat and ball. Now we've got our trigraph ear. And at the end, if you can see it past Dottie's head, we've got our d, 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 d for the drum. B for the bat, d, d, d for the drum. Well done. Let's put it together. B, eared. Dottie, you really are in the way, pretty kitty. You just want to be involved. Are you going to help? B, eared. B, eared. Dottie, what is it? Beard. Well done. She really is a clever cat. Well done, Dottie. Okay. And the next thing I want you to do, reception, is read through some of the sentences. I'll send them um, to mummies and daddies. Um, just have a look at them. You can just read them on the computer if you want to, or you can print them out and stick them in your book. It's up to you. But in all of those sentence there, sentences, there are words with the trigraph ear hidden in them, okay? So just like I always say, have a look at the sentence first, split up and blend the words that you're not quite sure of to begin with. And you can always ask your adult for a little bit of help. Um, watch out for those tricky words too. And then once you've worked out all the words in the sentence, you can say it and practice your fluency, okay? So year one, you've got two digraphs to look at today and they're quite similar. Why? Have a look. We've got one digraph here, one digraph here. How are they the same? Well done to those of you that are saying it. They're partly the same because they've both got the sound in them. So when we're saying these sounds, we've got to push the air out of our mouth with that 
sound, okay? So this one starts with a w, w, w. So the sound together is w, w, w. Can you see I'm pushing that air out of my mouth? W, w, w. And this one, now it actually starts with a p, 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 but it doesn't make a p, p, p sound. It actually makes a f sound. So we know that f sound as our single short f and our long double consonant f sound. But this one is a f, so we've got a w where we're pushing the air away and we've got a f where we're also pushing the air away. W and f, okay? So, first of all, I want you to have a go at treasure and trash. So I'm going to, let me just double check my planning. Yes, I'm going to send you some words rather than playing it on the computer. I want you to do your little table in your book, treasure and trash with the tick and the cross. And I would like you to work out which words are real, which words are rubbish. Of course, you've got to read them first, put the phonics buttons on, read them and then sort them into which is real, which is rubbish. Let's have a quick look at these two on the board so first of all we've got this one we've got our sound followed by our e phase three e ending with our single sound phase two so let's put that together well done what is it wheel fantastic the car has four wheels. Brilliant. So where are we going to put that one? You're absolutely right. It's a real word. So I would write it in my real section. Let's have a go at this one here. What's that sound again? Remember, it's not p, p. It's actually the same as this. It is a f sound. Well done. The f with a p and a h. Very funny, isn't it? Now we've got a split digraph for those beady eyes of you. I will just put it like this. It might be easier for you to work it out. What split digraph is that? Well done. It's a split O. And in the middle, we've got our um, phase two single sound, which is a mmm. So remember, if it's got a split digraph in it, you sound the first sound, then you sound the split, and then you go back to what's in the middle to sound that at the end. Let's put it together. Oh, mm. Hands together. Oh, mm. Oh, mm. Well done to those of you that are saying, what is it? Well done. It's foam. Not phone. It's foam. Now, some of you might be tricked into thinking that that's real because there is such thing as foam. Sometimes we wrap things in, um, in foam and when we have too many bubbles in our bath, it causes lots of bubbles and sometimes we call that foam. Um, but that foam starts with a short f sound. Because this starts with our p and our h, it's not a real word anymore. So this one is rubbish. It is foam, rubbish word. So that's your first task. Then your second task is to have a go at reading some of the sentences that I have sent you. In fact, reception, I forgot to read your sentence. We'll do both of them together. Let's do the year one first. What's this word, guys? Well done. Would you take, would you take a, here we go, we've got a f sound, f-o-t-o, f-o-t-o, well done, photo of the, here we go with our f sound, e-l, e-l, wheel, well done, p-l-e, phase five cup of tea, -E. nice blend at the beginning of that one, please. And actually, we've got a silent F on the end of that one, please. So let's put it together. Would you take a photo of the wheel, please? And that's got a question mark, so it would deserve a yes or a no. Could, would you take a photo of the wheel, please? Wonderful, thank you very much. Let's whiz back up to the um, 
reception um, sentence because it's for Mr. Smith, really. So, tricky word up here. Year one, you'll be shouting this one out. We should know this one. It is Mr. Well done, Smith. Smith. Mr. Smith feared, feared that he would have to cut off his beard. Beard. <laughs> Let's read it out again for fluency. Mr. Smith feared that he would have to cut off his beard, which he did, guys. We've seen photographic evidence. I'm going to egg him on to to put it on our um on your Facebook page because it is quite funny. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that though. Okay, so that's your phonics today, guys. I'm going to whiz straight on to the maths. I haven't actually got the pack activity or the chili challenge on the board today because the phonics and the maths took up a little bit more room. So you guys have been looking at time at home and I've been really pleased. I've seen loads of clocks that you've made. I know some of you have had a go at the o'clock time. Some of you have even pushed into half past times, which is really, really good. So today we're going to be thinking about three different units of time. That's seconds, minutes and hours. And we do things and we um, we um, record things in seconds, minutes and hours. Which one is the shortest amount of time out of those three? Is it seconds, is it minutes or is it hours? It's seconds, isn't it? Seconds is really, really short. It's a really short amount of time. If you were counting to five, one, two, three, four, five. That's five seconds. So what's the next shortest? Is it minutes or is it hours? You're right, it's minutes, well done. So the next lot of time is minutes and these take a little bit longer. So something that you might do, um, which takes a few minutes would be brushing your teeth. It doesn't take you seconds to brush your teeth and it doesn't take you a really long time to brush your teeth. It actually takes you um, two or three minutes, I imagine, to brush your teeth. And then the biggest unit of time or the longest unit of time that we were looking at is hours. And there's a whole 60 minutes in each hour. And these things take a little bit longer. So our maths lessons at school take an hour. Your lunch time at school takes an hour. Watching a film might take a whole hour. So it takes a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to send you a little activity where, I'll show it to the iPad, I'm going to give you some things for you to have a look at and I want you to sort them into what you would do, what would take seconds, what would take minutes and what would take hours. So you'll get some sheets that look like this. This one says what would you do in one second, one minute, one hour or one week is another one. So you'll have to sort out which of those things you would do when, which takes the shortest amount of time, which takes the longest amount of time. So let's have a quick look at some of these today. In fact, you could probably leave the weak ones. We're just going to focus on seconds, minutes and hours. I've drawn a couple of pictures. Let's see if we can sort them. I'll talk through my pictures first because they're not brilliant. Here's my first one. This is walking a dog. Would that take seconds? Would that take minutes? Would that take hours? We'll sort it in a minute. This one is blinking. Does that take seconds, minutes or hours? And the last one is, if you haven't worked it out already, is toasting some bread for your toast in the morning. Does that take seconds? Does it take minutes or does it take hours? Let's have a little look then. Let's go back to the little boy walking his, do walking his dog. Is he going to take his dog for a walk in seconds? No, that's too short. Is he going to take his dog out for a walk in minutes? For the amount of minutes you brush your teeth? 
No, it's a bit longer than that. You might take your, your dog for a walk for hours. Well done, a longer time spent. So I'm going to put the dog walker in the hours. It takes quite a long time to go for a walk. Usually we do a walk for an hour or over an hour. Let's think about this lady blinking. Miss Hooper's doing it now. That's not taking me hours, is it? Is it taking me the same amount of time to blink as it would to brush my teeth? No, it's a really short thing. Just take seconds, doesn't it? Well done. That's the shortest amount of time. So I'm going to put her in the seconds column. And my last one is minutes. Well done. So you could probably, as you're brushing your teeth, put your toast in the toaster and it would take the same amount of time. It's not taking a really long time. It doesn't take the whole walk to do some toast. It doesn't take seconds like blinking. It takes a little bit longer. So it's in the middle. It is minutes. So see if you can have a go at that activity at home. And then, rolling on top of that, I've given you a time challenge. So I'm just going to sit back because you might want to pause the video on this. So you're going to need a stopwatch for this and you can have them, some people have them on their watches, some people have them on their phones. You might have a little um, stopwatch, ga stopwatch gadget at home that you can use for this. What I want you to do is have a go at these challenges. So the first one is, how many hops in 10 seconds? So you're going to count to 10 or use your stopwatch. You're going to see how many hops we're going to do. So let's put, have I got a stopwatch on here? Yes, I have. Let's see how many Miss Hooper can do in 10 seconds. When it's on zero at the minute, and when it gets to 10, I'm going to have to stop. OK, ready to count? Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And stop. Miss Hooper did 20 hops in 10 seconds. See if you can beat me. The next one is how many star jumps in 20 seconds? So that's double the seconds, still a short amount of time. How many can you do? The next one is how many times can you put your shoes on in one minute? That's 60 whole seconds. So get your mums and dads, start your stopwatch, see how many times you can take your shoes on and off in that time. The next one is what letter in the alphabet, can you get to in 10 seconds? Should we do that together? Let's go back to my timer. So, again, it's on zero at the minute. Can you see? Nope. It's on zero. We're going to see. I'm going to have to stop at 10. Here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G... H I J K L M N O P Q R and it's on 10 seconds there so I got to R you might get a little bit further you might not get as far see which letter you get to in 10 seconds you could turn this into a bit of a competition with your mummies and daddies or your brothers and sisters so I want you to use seconds in minutes in your time challenges have a go at some of these or have a go at some on your own. OK, I hope you have lots of fun. Send me lots of pictures, guys. So your chilli challenge today. Yesterday, I challenged you to make an origami bird. Now, Lola Rose had a little bit of I had a few issues with this one. And um, I apologise because I probably should have tested this out. So um, that was quite difficult. So she actually did another origami style and she ended up with a beautiful swan. So well done, Lola Rose. Very resilient. Today, I would like you to have a go at stitching a chicken pattern. So you might have some old clothes or um, 
an old bit of cloth, an old tea towel. All you need is a needle and some thread and I want you just to have a go at doing the outline, the inside and maybe stitching on some beads if you want to of a chicken. So I've got a pattern here. I sent it out yesterday. So we've got some lovely running stitches along here. You can make them long, you can make them short. Um, this isn't something that you have to do. You might not have those things at home, so it might mean you don't do the chilli challenge for today, but that's okay. If you do have those resources, have a little go. We would have done this in class. And um, hopefully if we get back to school before the summer holidays, we will have a big sewing project. But just so you have a go, if you've got it at home, have a go, send me some photos, see how you get on. And the last thing I'm going to talk about today is your pack challenge. I have sent out a table for you to do this in. And today you need to be naming the male, the female and the babies of different farmyard animals. So one of them is name the pig. So you need to name the boy pig the girl pig and the baby pig. Now we already know what a baby pig is called. It's called a piglet. Well done, it's called a piglet. Now you're gonna have to use your investigation skills. You might use the internet. You might have a farm book at home. Um, be careful if you're going on the internet, make sure you're being nice and safe and make sure you're doing it with an adult. You're going to look you're going to type it into the search engine, what is the name of a boy pig, and it should come up nice and easy. I've done all of these, so um, I know that they're easy to do, so hopefully you will get on really well with that. Um, you probably know all of the baby names for those animals, so you can whiz through that bit really, really quick, and then use your investigation skills to work out the rest. So you can draw pictures with that as well, guys, if you want to, or print pictures out from the internet to stick them in your book and label them. However you want to do it, it's up to you. Um, keep sending me your photos, guys. Keep asking your mummies and daddies to tell me how um, what word of power you've been working on for that day. I'm sending out house points to people that are sending me um, pictures of their work or explanations of how they've been resilient or resourceful or how they've shown faith or love whatever it is I've got a tally chart I won't show you because that's unfair um, I've got a tally, a tally chart of all your house points so when we get back to school we're gonna have loads to put in so um, keep going with everything guys I'm really really proud of you I hope you're enjoying the activities and I will um, I'll be back soon for another teaching video. I hope you enjoyed it today. Uh, I will see you soon. Bye.